quit high school and started learning programming by myself. So you did not even go to college. I actually saw Tanmay Bhat tweet about Solana and that won a security uh, bounty and that was worth twenty five thousand dollars. And then FTX happened, everything kind of blew out and like payments. I think is the most biggest use case that's still very untouched by the mainstream. So you totally skipped out on the physics, chemistry, math, IIT, JIT, and you were coding. How did you yeah. convince your parents, or like how did your brother convince your parents? I guess four hundred cash, like three CR in Indian currency. That's like a house for a bounty. How do you find opportunities to work at companies? So hi everyone and welcome to another podcast. Today we have Kunal who I have known for around 2.5 years. Uh, he's a young engineer from India, primarily working in Web3. And the way I came to know about him was because he was one of the initial Solana engineers from the country. So we'll try to understand his journey, understand what he did uh, over the past three-ish years, uh, how he learned Solana, how he became one of the few engineers in Solana initially, and what is he currently working on without any further ado. Kunal, welcome to the pod. Hi. Hi, Harpreet. Uh, awesome to be here. Amazing. Let's kick things off with an introduction. Could you give a brief to the audience about yourself? Yeah, sure. So, I'm Kunal Bagheria. I'm 19 right now. I quit high school and started learning programming by myself with uh, with an old MacBook, and that got me to places around the world globally. And now I'm here. Very cool. Uh, you said you dropped out of high school. Cool. So you did not even go to college. Nope. Okay. Tenth grade, and that's it. Wow, that is a unique path to begin with. So, do you have strong financial backing? Do you have some motivation, relative who's done well, that motivated you to just drop out? Um. Yeah. Actually, my brother dropped out as well, but he dropped out after twelfth actually. So okay. he completed his high school, but did not join college. But for me. I did not even complete high school. So, yeah, all of this happened quite randomly actually because there was COVID around at that time. And like I was basically taking a gap year because I wasn't able to join back since like the virus was at full flow at that moment. So when I didn't join, I started learning programming. And yep, after that, everything just sort of happened. Got it. So you totally skipped out on the physics, chemistry, math, IIT, JIT, and you were coding since yes. eleven. How did you yeah. convince your parents, or like how did your brother convince your parents? I guess. So like my brother started his journey in his childhood actually. So very early on, he was like building and breaking computers since very early. Even my parents knew that he was going to do something with computer, even if he doesn't uh, like complete college, because everyone knows that like college. Like if you go to a mediocre college, it's not really worth it unless you're going to make connections there. So it was kind of like an obvious decision at that point that uh, he could just drop out of college. He didn't even join college, and for me, since like it was already been done and done before, so it was kind of like easy. And I didn't, I we did not even have a proper talk about this ever. Like it just sort of like was an unsaid decision that just kind of happened. Got it. This is like very difficult to do uh, for like most non-affluent families. This is like very common in Bombay. Uh, like people drop out or just you know go to the US randomly for bachelors. Uh, so, did you have a very strong financial backing, or were you brothers you know printing money or at least giving some signals to your parents that it made it an easy decision? Can't say a strong financial backing, but it was decent enough. And until the decision was taken that. I wouldn't be going to college. I started making on my own, which was okay. like a huge, I think, factor in the decision. Got it. So you should start to make money. Your parents are like, they'll figure things out. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Very cool. So you were sixteen-ish, and when did you start to code? So I've been doing HTML, CSS since I was like fourteen, but okay. that wasn't anything like serious because that didn't have anything logical. That I was just doing for fun, but. Things started getting serious when I started uh, building with JavaScript. Like I started with JavaScript, it was very difficult at that time mm -hmm. in 2020, and I was 15 at that time. Got it. So you started doing JavaScript when you were 15, and how did you land your very first paid gig? I had just DM'd someone who was looking for work in a Discord server. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, he wanted to get a website done, so I just pitched him then for 800 bucks, 800 dollars. Yeah, he said. Just do it. 
Oh, okay, interesting. Wow, that's pretty cool. So you're 15, making $800. How are you getting compensated? Did, did you have a bank account? Yeah, I, I did have a bank account because I had like this minor bank card thingy. So yeah, I had a bank account. Okay, interesting. Super cool. Okay, so you're 15, you're starting to code, you're making some money, you've decided you'll drop out. Um, how did you, and now you, 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 I don't know, what are you doing right now? Are you working full time? Yeah, I'm a co-founder at a company called Banger. We build prediction markets for tweets. So it's just like a market for how viral a tweet would go. And yeah, I'm basically working on that right now. It's called Banger? Yeah, it's called Banger. Nice, very cool. When did you start working on this? Uh, just a month and a half ago. Okay, got it. So let yeah. take me through your whole journey from since you were 15, where all have you worked? Uh, and you know, if you could give rough ranges of how much money you were making throughout, I would assume these are like probably spikes because you were getting grants from time to time, but do you have a yes. rough timeline? Yeah. At that point, the 800 bucks gig that I did, that wasn't anything serious or like, because that was just a website, a static website. So I didn't really take it uh, into consideration that this could be like a full-time career for me. But after that, like when I started doing logical programming, JavaScript, TypeScript, React, Mind Stack, and then Prisma and all of that. That's when I uh, got the idea of building a Web3 product. I actually saw Tanmay Bhatt tweet about Solana and found cryptocurrency very like fascinating and like very interesting. Like uh, global remittance in a snap, I think that was very interesting for me. So I built my first product called Vagme.py, applied a grant for it through Super Team in 2021 and got $5,000 for it. So I was actually the first grantee. So yeah, I earned 5,000 bucks for it and then was working on it and then started building other stuff along the side, won more grants. And then after that, won a security uh, bounty and that was worth $25,000, which was like a very big bounty at that time. Wow, that's insane. This was a security yeah. vulnerability in? Uh, in an API that Solana had built for a hackathon website, basically. So it was leaking public data. So I had just like sent an email that took me two minutes. And <laughs> yeah. That is insane. And you said this was $25,000. Was this like logged soul or was this USDC? Uh, it was supposed to be logged soul, but they just released it in USDC instantly. Oh. But was that a good if, yeah, tell me, tell me. Uh, No, it wasn't. Because if they had given me logged soul, I would have received like 200k or something. Oh, wow. It grew <laughs> 8x since then? Yeah, yeah. I think oh, even more than that, actually. Perhaps it's like 300k or 400k by now. 400k is like 32. That's like 3 CR in Indian currency. That's like a house for a bounty. Uh, yeah. Which yeah, is a combination that's... of the bounty being really high to begin with. But you know, Solana <laughs> <laughs> going 8x. Yeah, yeah. But it's all in all, it was still like $25,000. is like a huge amount. So it's fine. And then after that, started working full time in a crypto company called Voidcell, which was a decentralized blog publishing platform. So, uh, uh, I was working there for a year and then FTX happened, everything kind of blew out and like everything was in shit. We lost a bunch of funds in that. So it, like I had to quit that company. Got it. And after, this was word cell you left in 2022? Uh, 2023. So I joined in 2022 and left in 2023. Got it. And what have you been up to since then? Uh, I have built a few side projects, worked on a few ambitious ideas that I had, but it like wasn't able to find market fit. So done with that, okay. uh, worked on a YC company's contract for three months after that. And now currently working in Banger. Got it. How did Banger start? It's like you mentioned you're co-founding it. So could you give a brief of the team, the idea and have you raised already? Yeah, we have, we have raised from the accelerator and we are currently in the process of raising more. Got it. And, um, so Aditya Shetty, who is like managing the Indian chapter for Super Team, basically DM'd me saying that, hey, do you want to like work with this company called Banger? They recently won this hackathon called Colosseum. So I was like, I, yeah, sure. I would love to get in touch with them and see what's up. And initially it was just a contract. Uh, so it was just like a month's contract. And then I found that, yeah, this can be something that's huge. I think I should join as like a full time engineer and also perhaps like go found this company. Super interesting. Wow. And what's your role uh, 
in this specific company let's start there uh, i'm building their web app and after the web app has been shipped then their mobile app and then also all the infrastructure behind the web app and the mobile app that's powering them cause so you're not doing too much web3 stuff then i uh, know so web3 is included in like the web app and the mobile app so it's like but the smart contract end of it is being handled by another team essentially got it and it's been okay. outsourced to another team got it so writing the smart contract is outsourced and you're building front end mobile app deploying infrastructure you're the full stack yeah. engineer mobile engineer and the devops engineer yeah oh boy okay makes sense uh do you think this is becoming very common where one person is just owning everything or is this just a startup thing or maybe you're the co-founder that's why uh could be a startup thing actually because like very early on people don't hire a lot of people and like when you can get someone who can do all of it mm-hmm. then it just makes sense that there's no reason to hire other people at this stage in the company that makes a lot of sense uh what's your experience with writing smart contracts on solana uh i've written a few smart contracts but i've never deployed one to main that to be honest like i know all the concepts but i've never deployed one to main it because i don't feel it's appropriate enough for me who is not experienced enough to like manage user funds or something like that i think it's best done by the people who are who have been in this industry for a lot of years makes sense and however much knowledge you have already for writing smart contracts how did you learn rust how did you learn about the programming model on solana how did you learn how to write smart contracts uh just tinkering around actually uh, even with rust i built a tool called rusty vibes which was really popular in github it's basically like a cli tool that enables any keyboard to sound like a mechanical keyboard which is okay. like it's a software cli program that just makes mechanical keyboard sounds on keypress so that's when i actually learned rust and then i kept on improving gradually when i built more cli tools and eventually when i started like reading documentation about programs that's when i built like hello world program and then a few more with got it makes a lot of sense okay and how did you learn full stack development uh full stack development that's kind of tough to answer because it's not like i had a specific path for learning full stack it was just like sometimes you just whatever you need you just go to that and then learn that with more even with mon it was exactly like that i learned react first and then it wasn't a specific path per se so it's just one by one you just connect all the pieces and then after that you're a full stack developer <laughs> got it like just getting your hands really dirty and then eventually just yeah know, exactly makes a lot of sense um how do you find opportunities to work at companies is it super team generally is that the ecosystem that you find opportunities from um yeah super team does provide a lot of opportunities but at this moment like when you have built a public profile people just come to you at this point this you don't even have to go and ask them hey do, uh, do you have uh, do you require an engineer to work on your company it's opposite at this point call it so you're saying you get reached out more often than you reaching out to folks yeah exactly okay so how do you build a public profile would be my next question then I don't have an <laughs> A to Z guide for that. It just happened for me. I was I got lucky. So yeah, got it. Makes sense. But yeah, just like uh, building in public and publishing mm-hmm. more, publishing more of your work. I think that can build like a good profile for you. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. Let's say you're a complete beginner uh, and you want to get into the Solana ecosystem because there are outsized outcomes here. As you mentioned, you found one bounty and almost could have won 200k. Um, mm-hmm. So how does a complete beginner, maybe you know a little bit of full stack they know, how can they start to you know approach the ecosystem? If that was you today, uh, and mm-hmm. let's say you did not have super team and the initial push, how would you get into the ecosystem? Firstly, like being on Twitter, like just following all the best people in this industry, and then secondly, reading through all their docs, knowing what Solana is and all its architecture, uh, like having a grasp of the concepts of the industry will help you to like get into this much quicker than everyone else. and then thirdly just build like if you have an idea just build it around and then share it on your twitter so like other people in this industry can find you got it do you have any specific ideas that you've always wanted to pursue or did not have the time for it let's say someone wants to pick them up dao proposals i think uh, there's realms where they vote on proposals for daos i think if that's migrated over to blinks i think people would appreciate that got it that makes sense that's a good idea 
um yeah. if i'm not wrong blinks is also sponsoring bounties right now right um, yeah they're offering 400k in grants at this moment for blinks ideas got it so someone probably wants to get in this probably the best way to um, yeah there's the best time to get into this right now got it so if someone wants to get in right now blinks also does not require a lot of smart contract knowledge right you can build on no, the ui yeah it's basically just like your normal server stuff you basically just build like the server to make sure that blinks works with phantom got it that makes a lot of sense what are the use cases in crypto that you are most interested in slash you think will be big in the future payments payments i think is the most biggest use case that still very untouched by the mainstream like finance world at this point and like secondly there would be data authenticity like if someone could uh, link identification documents of a person mm-hmm. in blockchain like if someone could migrate that over into the blockchain i think at some point it could enable citizens to vote for governments or like governmental decisions at some point in the future got it makes a lot of sense um super interesting what are your thoughts on the wazirx hack <laughs> um what can i even say about that did you have funds there thankfully no i hold my own keys so no no thanks got it um tragic but what can we what can be even done about that i'm not sure how it's going to affect the regulations around crypto in india because it's like a huge setback i think i don't i agree um cool man that's the questions i had do you have any questions for me um no not really <laughs> okay but yeah 